Hello and welcome to the Pig Daily, episode number 89. And today we are going to do a tribute to Patience, the scrappy king, the winner of Home Story Cup, the guy who no one really ever says Patience is the favorite to win a tournament. I don't know if he has won a tournament. Oh, I think he won a DreamHack maybe one time. Basically, he doesn't, he doesn't win that much stuff. He's always high placing. He's had an amazing year. But he's also someone who doesn't get idolized that much by, by fans and players. They're like, oh, he's a bit scrappy in how he plays. He's a little bit messy. Um, and hey, man, he's the scrappy king. He won a tournament with so many scrappy, chaotic games. Uh, and I just love it. So this, this episode is going to be a tribute to that. It's also going to be a tribute to a map which is no longer with us. So we just need to have a moment's silence right now for Dasan Station because it's gone it's gone forever we've gone back to daybreak of all maps which is kind of hideous so let's dive on into game and let's take a look at this replay this is of course uh from i believe it was the group stage of uh of home story cup if i remember but spawning down here in the bottom left hand side the challenger we'll call him the challenger it is ty and his opponent up here in the top left I know I already spoiled it. We know that Patience is eventually going to win this set, but this game is just so impressive. It is Patience. And obviously this map is a little bit, little bit of a wonky map. Um, it takes you about six seconds to walk to your opponent's base, which creates some interesting situations. It's probably the nicest way to put it. Basically, this is the map which creates probably some of the most entertaining games to watch, but like most maps that force that uh, action and, and so on in StarCraft 2, it's also one which is uh, a map rife with imbalance. Uh, it's a map where the, the general way I like to think about this map, because and I feel like it's completely accurate, is Protoss beats Terran, Terran beats Zerg, and Zerg beats Protoss. So there's like this... There's kind of like shifting, you punch that guy in the face, he punches the guy next to him, and, and then it goes full circle. But some of these Korean Terran players have been putting on an awfully strong fight on this map. I still don't think I've seen one win on this map, but Jesus, if TY didn't come close this game. Like, this game is just incredible. So we're just going to kind of cast you guys through it and take a look at it. To open up, TY's actually opened up gas burst into a very quick second gas. Um, with a marine coming out of that barracks first, straight into factory. This looks a lot like the 1-1-1 uh, one, one, one sort of siege tank cyclone medevac liberator pushes, which TY has been using a fair amount in uh, Legacy of the Void. And yes, a reactor goes straight away down after that marine comes out. That probe of patience actually does get sniped there. Meanwhile at home, patience has gone for two gates. And uh, yeah... He's just going to be going Stalker. Double Stalker. Okay, yeah. So, both players really not going for fast expansions. And this is quite standard for this map. I feel like as a Protoss player, you can expand and kind of play out a relatively normal game. But who can resist the allure of just rushing to your opponent's side of the map as quickly as possible? That's a very fast Mothership Core and a Probe coming out as well. So, it looks like he's going to be doing a Pylon Rush. It takes so little time for that Mothership Core to get here which is why players love to do this on this map. Um, the only way to really stop this is if you put a bunker down there, but TY has not scouted at all. So this is his first warning of what's coming, and only now does he realize, shit, I've only got three marines. There's no way I can kill these pylons in time. He can beat the mothership core in a straight up fight, but he's not gonna be able to chase it down if it runs away, and it does run away. Patience backs on off. That widow mine's nice for zoning, but the mothership core giving that high ground vision and Patience is going to be able to blast down these depots. Cancels the second pylon. And smart move from TY. He knows he can't hold this position. Does cancel that depot. Actually throwing away a marine there. A little bit sloppy. And the supply block of all supply blocks. 29 over 15 supply here for TY. Has to throw down three depots behind his mineral line. Meanwhile behind this, Robo and Twilight are down. Still no expansion for Patience. So Patience is just playing very aggressively right now. Meanwhile, TY, I think he'd actually be in a good position for a counterattack, but because of that supply block, it delayed his siege tank and his medevac so long. And now that, that sort of window where he could potentially kill with a counterattack has definitely been slipping away. That moment when you're doing a little bit of an analytical cast of a game and then you, are, you have the overwhelming urge to sneeze, so you're forced to hold your finger underneath your nose. 
You guys know that trick? If you don't, you should use it. It's a great trick. Someone showed it to me. I didn't believe them. Uh, I tried it and then it worked. And now I do it all the time. Oh! Mothership Core is going to come on in. Is going to see the starport. Doesn't see the siege tank. But it does see this tech lab on that starport. So he knows he's got to be careful of any uh, banshees coming to follow this up. And as a result, we are just going to see a raven actually coming out for TY. I think otherwise there's a good chance he goes for some like sneaky cloaked banshees there. TY here trying to harass with this medevac as much as he can, but he's got to be very careful. Of course, this was played just before the patch came out. Oh, no! Oh my gosh, he's lost the medevac and the siege tank. Will he get the stalker? Does get one stalker for it, but that's a great trade for patience. That siege tank is the linchpin of this push. But patience finds the pickoff there. And he's getting blink, he's getting a warp prism, but he still doesn't really have enough units to deal with this many marines. Uh, unfortunately for TY, these SCVs don't have much of a role. They're going to repair that Widow Mine. New Siege Tank is going to arrive, and there's more Siege Tanks on the way. A Raven as well, more Marines being produced. Still no expansion here for TY. TY has to kill Patience Expansion. Patience, on the other hand, like, okay, he's transitioned workers down here, and they're going to be mining gold minerals. He is up at 26 probes, those 24 SCVs. So if Patience can hang on to this Nexus for like one or two minutes, then maybe he can get enough units out to defend. But... Those Adepts going in, taking a lot of damage, all their shields gone. They're going to try and intercept the reinforcements, but a Siege Tank there going to make uh, quick work out of those two Adepts, unfortunately, for uh, Patience. Both Adepts do go down. Looks like he's had to just abandon that low ground, taking so much damage on these units. But finally, an Immortal does join the party. That's going to make it very hard for TY to push up into the main base. This Raven scouting the high ground there. And TY, he wants to keep pushing this. He's going to start to walk these siege tanks forward. Meanwhile, Patience with the uh, Warp Prism has warped in three Adepts back home. Will be able to intercept reinforcements. This time, a tank and two Marines up against three Adepts and a Stalker. But TY can't afford to trade these uh, expensive units against these cheaper units of Patience. Patience, very good move. Pulls back TY and then just gets up out of there. Right now, Patience is in a pretty hard spot because these units don't scale quite as well as things like a Raven, a Banshee, and three Siege Tanks out right now. The only problem for TY is he doesn't have any Medivacs, so he can't really reposition these tanks very well. Um, and that is a problem. He's also got a Liberator on the way. He's going to actually... Oh, wow. Borrow a Widow Mine there to deny that expansion. Very nice move. But Patience is going to find an angle here with this War Prism. He's going to come in. That one of the weaknesses of Dasan is just how wide open that main base is. And actually snipes down a Siege Tank. Persistence. That really is like the secret to how Patience stays in games like this. Like right now, his position is still kind of kind of dirty right now. Still hasn't restarted this Nexus. This Gold Command Center is three quarters of the way done. And that's, that's part of what makes Patience so good at surviving these games, though. He just keeps finding those angles to counterattack. Look at this. Stalkers coming in from behind this base. They're going to try and deny the mining there, pick off workers. Stalkers on the front side looking for an opportunity. It is well defended, so he just blinks them on out of there. But he's got the Warp Prism there with the Adepts. It looks like he can still just poke into this main base as he wishes to. Let me just drop those Adepts on those Marines. Um, while he is... Oh! Blinks up on into the main. Starts warping in more Adepts as well. Those auto turrets do drop down. Keep in mind these auto turrets do 16 damage. They do even more in the new patch. But uh, they do kind of fend away the Protoss units for now. But these Marines don't have Stim yet. It's only about halfway done. And uh, Patience is forced to back off. Meanwhile, back home... That Banshee was zoning around. It got one worker kill and almost got a sentry. Oh no! Patience accidentally rallies an immortal. You know, Patience is so good in these scrappy games. He is so amazing. But the one thing <laughs> which does let him down sometimes is that he tries to do so many things at once. Look at this, he's attacking so many places. And every now and then he does slip over and uh, lose some units in a little bit of a messy way. Oh, almost got that Raven. Still a pretty good trade so far. And he's picking away a lot of workers here. These stalkers on the back as well, picking off heaps of workers on the mining. TY with his super immobile units is unable to cover all of these angles. Um, these units of TYs are fantastic, but only when they're actually dictating where the fight happens. That Raven goes down these stalkers. They are surrounded by the SCVs now, but already eight workers have gone down. The blink backwards. Oh, and Patience ferrying all those units up that were uh, defending the gold minerals, using that warp prism to pick up these low hit point units, using the blink micro as well. More adepts are warping in. So many SCVs going down. And Patience here against multiple tanks and liberators, banshees, and raven. 
has managed to find the opening there to do 17 workers of damage. Behind this, he also got a Nexus down. And this is just patience in a nutshell. Finds the way to get the damage done. Just simply by always looking for that weak spot. He's never a player who just sits there and says, Oh, you've got too many units, I can't attack. He always rotates and finds those spots. And if there's a map that really caters to that, it's definitely Dasan Station. He's... TY's now got still that gold mineral line. He's got a decent bit of mining in the main. Uh, Workers-wise, Patience is up about six workers after this. But he still needs to get more done. He's still got three sentries and the mortal poking at the front. They're going to be looking for some potential damage. These stalkers on the backside getting chased out. Now that Stim and Medivacs are done, it's going to be harder to run circles around TY. Um, and here we see... Oh, the Banshee comes up. <clears throat> Does see this is actually a pretty fearsome attack here from Patience. And he's going to blink... Over those rocks, on top of that Liberator, Liberator goes down. Great force fields on the ramp. And TY's got to be so annoyed right now. Patience is just finding the openings absolutely everywhere. Oh, man. Takes a pretty damn fantastic trade. He is starting to lose a few too many units. Does save that Immortal and the last two Stalkers. Doesn't quite get the Orbital Command Center. He does get 12 Workers there, though. And now we see Patience is up at 31 probes versus 19. It's going to continue to drop behind that mineral line, trying to be as annoying as possible, forcing TY to lift that up. And even after all this, though, let's take a look at this. Army supply is up about 10 for, uh, for TY. Lost a lot of his important units, though. He's only got two tank evacs, doesn't have any liberators or banshees left, and still no way to shut down this war prism. Patience just going to come in again. Why? Because he knows he's got almost nothing at home. He actually cannot defend a frontal push right now. So he needs to buy more time. And he's going to go for that combat shield. Doesn't quite get it, but forces all the medevacs home. And Patience here just realizes that if he can just keep TY back at home long enough, he can just pump out enough probes. He's adding glaives, so he is adding tech. He's adding a lot of workers. He's got a probe here, adding more gateways now. But this warp prism, he knows he needs to buy a lot of time. That's a big, scary army right there. He's got an observer watching it, and so he's going to continue to come in. Grabs another two SCVs here. Might go back and kill some more, even. Does kill three, four. And does pick up to survive there. Back at home, he's going to have to barely hang on using overcharge. A couple of immortals and stalkers. And he's just going to continue to harass here over and over again. Look at that hold position, Micro. Just out of range of that siege tank continuing to snipe off these workers and the thing is if a tank moves too far forward it's just gonna get sniped and patience goes for it but luckily for ty those marines were there they stimmed to protect that just using the strength of this warp prism so damn well even a third base going down behind this patience here knows that his army is not the greatest quality he doesn't have any upgrades that's a pattern you'll see in patience games as well is he almost always forgoes upgrades in favor of having more units out because he knows that just having more units out at a, a timing, you know, immediately is always going to give him the opportunity to do counter-attack damage. So if he can just invest insane amounts of money in, uh, in having more units out at times where anyone else would be investing in upgrades and so on, he knows he's going to get immediate benefits by having a stronger standing army and more opportunities to harass. Once again, he's rotating his whole army around the backside of this gold base. Looks like, though, a couple of drops are headed in his direction. I don't think Patience has spotted it. He hasn't, but he's going to come in from behind. Adept's coming in first, leading the charge. More Stalkers and Mortals are going to come down. I think they're going to go for these back rocks. Back at home, there is only the Mothership Core. If that goes down, he's got nothing at home. He's got no pylons defending his natural. Only one pylon at his third, and his whole army is actually going to retreat right now. But TY here being a little bit too careful. Playing this a little bit afraid, he sees the whole army just chilling up there, and rather than dropping in the main... TY is worried about dying here, and he's actually going to move his army back to defend his gold base. TY knows that this army is still very scary in the open ground, and he'd much rather use the strength of these units when they're all together. Tanks, Liberators, uh, and Medivacs all together. The problem is, because he rotated back and he's done this one clear decisive push, the Observer sees everything, and now Patience can just dive in. The YOLO blink, Patience trademark move, grabs a tank. Takes a lot of damage, actually, gets out of there, but does pull the army back temporarily. The Observer does get sniped down. And TY here. Oh, man, four adepts in the main base as well. Did that Warp Prism go down? No, the Warp Prism is actually still down here, but these adepts were just shooting a depot for a long time. A little bit of Miss Micro there from Patience. And uh, looks like 
is going to actually just dive into that natural. Oh no, dives right into the army. In the midst of the chaos, Patience does make a bit of a crucial mistake there. It loses a lot of units. TY's army still looking quite frightening, but he just needs to get across the map and push. And Patience knows... He knows he doesn't want to fight tanks and liberators front on in a choke point. He's just going to keep on counterattacking, absorbing these tank shots, dives on in here, blasts that siege tank away. Meanwhile, oh, warps in a sentry at home where he actually must have warped that in with the previous push, specifically to try and force field out any uh, push and, and delay it. Meanwhile, oh, the liberators go home for TY. They're actually going to be able to defend the counterattack. And Patience here realizes he's going to have to give up that main base, I think. Uh, Mothership Court does go down. That Immortal's going to get blasted down as well. He's trying to warp in as many units as he can. His army's going to rotate home. He knows even if he loses his whole main, he's still on two mining bases against uh, an almost completely mined out main base of TY. So Patience is just going to gather up all of his units and he's going to try and engage this. Uh, TY hasn't realized this or he's only just realizing it now. He's got to bring those Liberators back to join up with his army. But remember, if Patience can just pull TY out of position, separate his army from the Widow Mines, separate the Liberators from the Bios, uh, then suddenly he's going to be very powerful. If he engages on top of Widow Mine, Mines and Liberators, that's where things end very badly for him. Already, because of the Stims, the Bio army is very hurt. Those Medivacs are exceptionally low on energy. And TY knows that he's up against two mining bases. He knows he's on a timer. Patience knows he's continuing to mine money. So he's massing gateways, he's getting an extra core. He knows any units he can warp in and just add to his army. Oh, will be a huge advantage. And there we go. He finally finds a few units exposed. Grabs about six marines there with that great little set of force fields. And he's just going to keep poking forward here. He knows that the nature of this Terran army is it needs to all be sieged up. So it can only move forward a few units at a time. And the superior range of the stalkers and immortals over the marines means that he can definitely afford to pick away at this. Does take a nasty liberator shot on that immortal. But look at this, just rotating around the edges. It's not like he actually expects himself to find a very good engage here. But, oh, there we go. He's going to get a Widow Mine. Nice. Gets one Widow Mine, two Widow Mines. Oh, the Focus Fire even gets the Medivac that was trying to save the Marauder. Only loses one Adept. Patience here, just using, actually using his patience for once rather than that YOLO, which we, we know him so well for. You know, we all laugh about how patience loves to just blink into the opponent every single time, but... When it comes to these uh, these positions, he's an absolute master of knowing how much he has to wait. But TY now, gonna dive down on top of that base. Uh, problem for him is he is leaving those Widow Mines behind. Actually, there's only one Widow Mine left. And he's also left, uh, you know, he's, he's gonna deny this Mineral Line. He does need to get rid of these Gateways, but already more Stalkers warping in. Another four Stalkers warped in off these Gateways. Patience is already managing to spend more and more of that money. Meanwhile, there's only a few Marines and Marauders on the way here for uh, TY. He's just dropping mules on that gold base. Stalkers come in from behind, though. They find an exposed Liberator, dives forward, forces the whole army of TY to evacuate, and he's losing units, bleeding them off a few at a time. Every single time, Patience forces these engagements. More gateways are going down. The Stalkers, and Adepts, and Mortals, and Sentries all coming down this way. There's almost no Medivac energy left. Two more Medivacs are on the way, but this, this army... All is damaged, about 10, 20 hit points. And that's going to make a big difference. This, oh, those force fields, sections off a bunch of the bio. He's going to need to blink on those liberators. He does it, the YOLO blink into the liberation zones. Snipes down those liberators. He knew he'd already sniped off enough bio that it was worth it, even though it was a very ballsy trade. A lot of players would have been afraid to do that, but not patience. He dies on top of the army. He overwhelms everything, ends up with just a few stalkers left over at the end. And that's all she wrote. That's going to be the end of it here for TY. Those stalkers coming in. There's no units left. And TY has to tap on out. Wow. That game is just, just so chaotic, so entertaining. I do definitely think there were a few windows where maybe TY needed to just, just go a little bit YOLO and put some more pressure on. But I think that game is like the testament to patience. Um, and of course, I do want to say a massive thanks to Take TV and uh, sp specifically Naruto uh, from Take TV who hooked me up with the replays um, from Home Story. So massive thanks to those guys. But this was just just such a, a funny, ridiculous game. And I really loved how after that early um, aggression, just killed a few depots, didn't really get anything else done. And then there was like that moment where um, patience lost his nexus to the counter-attack. He was just like going for a few too many things at once. And the fact that he just counter-attacked 
cons like non-stop without giving Ty a moment to like gather his breath and and kind of figure out what was happening in the game. He did that for like 12 minutes straight of just non-stop counter attacks from when he took this uh, this gold base going down right up until later. And he just kept on abusing those positions over and over again. There was a few mistakes here and there. You know, those adepts got a marine and damaged a siege tank and that was it. There definitely were mistakes. But what I really love about Patience is how he just always looks for those angles. And it's part of just how he, he plays is he's always looking for these sort of situations where he can grab those little those little angles, those little edges, those sick little counterattacks. Like I said, his forges, in PvP as well, his upgrades were almost always later than Zest's. Um, you know, he really delays things like forges and focuses on the aggression. He focuses on the ability to have more units and really thrives in that state of the game. He knows that's his strength and as a result, he plays to it. This warp prism here, I believe is the same warp prism which stays alive all game. And because he's got a Stalker in it as well, you can't really just chase that down with a Viking. Like, a Viking can help zone it out a little bit, but it's very hard to cover this huge, wide-open main base. And he just uses this Warp Prism as insurance, you know? He can always just pick up the units and run away if he needs to. Right up until Stim's done, he can always just siege up pretty much in the battle like that, and he can just continue to make all these cool things happen. So if you guys have any questions or anything, shout them out with that X5 underscore pig tag. I just wanted to go over this game because I thought it was brilliant. Um, and it really is a testament to Dan Dan's game station or Dasan station. Because it is the most entertaining map in the pool. Unfortunately, similar to Delta Quadrant before it uh, and a few of those other maps which players dislike playing on. But people love to watch other people play on. It promotes action. It promotes chaos. Unfortunately, usually these maps do tend to favor one race uh, over the other, and it just comes down to a few uh, different characteristics. So while we continue to watch this, well, let's think about why is this a little bit Protoss favored in this matchup? Why is it a lot Zerg favored against Protoss? Why is it a bit Terran favored versus Zerg? The thing is, there's just uh, too much space in this main base. There are a thousand different places to drop. You cannot zone out a warp prism. So missile turrets, a little pack of marines, you're never going to be able to stop them dropping in your base. Likewise, you've got one, two entrances into your main base, whereas almost every other map only ever has one. And then you've also got third entrance and your natural or third, whatever you want to call this gold base, has an area behind the mineral line which your opponent can get to, which you can't get to until you take rocks down. So this map simply always is going to promote aggression. <clears throat> and so in the early stages of it, Protoss definitely has a lot more maneuverability than Terran. Until Terran gets up a big, well-upgraded bio-army with Stim and Medivax, <clears throat> it's simply weaker. Because for the Protoss, they only need to get Blick or Glaives, or preferably both of those, and then they can bounce around with these very mobile units, you know. They have Shade, they have Blink. Whilst Terran really does need to get the Stim and the Combat Shields and Medivax before they can actually use all of those things. Stim on its own, not that great, because you can't heal up. Combat Shields on its own, not that great, because you can't actually chase your opponent's units down. Um, as a result, Terran usually ends up just really struggling in these early stages to keep pace with the threat of constant aggression here from Protoss. And that's exactly what Patience did over and over again. Um, he just kept on attacking from these angles. And if you think about it from TY, you say, well, why don't you just defend your base better? It's like, well, he did leave tanks and liberators in his mineral lines, left bio up here in between his bases, because he doesn't leave it near the front. He doesn't know if stalkers are going to come in and just snipe down his liberator and kill his workers. So these units just keep coming in, keep picking off workers over and over again, and already 22 workers killed at the nine minute mark. Uh, of course, we've seen patients pull off these sort of wins on other maps as well, but it's definitely a map where I've loved watching so many exciting games on it. Generally, though, not the best for competitive play. Um, a lot better than Core Hall Carnage, in my opinion. Like, this map, yes, it's crazy aggressive, it's dirty, it's messy, but you can always try to surprise your opponent, even if you're the, weak, the race which has less aggressive options at a certain point in the game. You can still pull out some really nice moves. Core Hall Carnage, um, I think, was a much worse map because it was kind of overly defensive. If you guys don't remember that map, it was the map where it was kind of like a, a crucible and there was destructible rocks literally everywhere. 
But uh, depending on spawn locations, you could pretty much spawn in your opponent's third base um, or fourth base, and then you'd you'd just have nowhere to expand except towards each other, and like your your third bases would be right next to each other, and it would just be really silly. Um, so yeah, but patience here, like this is just so sick. Just constantly focusing on these counter attacks, and I really want to highlight this point in the game as well. So there's a moment somewhere where you're behind, you're feeling like, oh shit, I'm dead, I'm screwed in this game. And then you start going, well, what do I do when I'm behind? And it's always the same answer, right? Well, you try to counterattack, you try to get some harassment damage, you try to get some, some free damage done. And if you start to get some damage done or feel like you're pinning your opponent back at all, um, there's always something which, I mean, you're, this was always your aim with your harassment, right? So you always have this sort of like, well, if I can just pin him back a bit or while I'm doing this damage, I want to be a bit greedy behind that. And the idea is... You can't really win a frontal fight. That's how you get back in the game. You have to cut something out of your build. Whoops. I forgot that I left all my alerts on. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Has that been on the whole time? GG. Um, but yeah, basically at this point, patience isn't just harassing. It becomes more and more non-committal how he's harassing. But he's really just saying, well, if you go across the map, it's really hard. Because you need to focus on trying to defend what's going on at home. If you don't do that, you're going to lose your whole economy. And then I don't even need to take a good fight at home. I just need to survive. That's all I need to do. But behind this, you're not saying, well, I'm just going to mass units for when he attacks because you also need to catch up in economy. So usually you're focusing on your economy quite a lot. And we saw this here where Patience was pumping out probes for these last two, about two minutes, just nonstop two probes at a time from when this um, when this next is finished. So you see, he's kind of frozen on that probe production while all this fighting's going on. He's trying to harass... And then he starts up pro production here. And we're going to see him be more and more consistent with that. He's a bit supply blocked right now. So he's continuing to harass over and over again. And the probes start up again. So behind this, he's really trying to build up that economy. And he's not really focusing on any sort of frontal army at home. Here, obviously, he's committing to what is pretty much a frontal assault with these units. And then as soon as that falters off and he starts having less units, we're going to see more focus on his economy. <laughs> I keep saying it and I'm like, oh. okay, here's where it starts. Here's the point where he says, okay, no longer am I trying to just kill you with a frontal attack. Like that attack on the back there of the mineral line, that was a really committed attack. He was really trying to go for it. But now he starts committing to probes a little bit more. He's continuing to try to hit from two sides. He's still committing to units. And that's specifically because he's playing to this map and he says, look, you can't defend both locations at once. If I can just keep trading, I can keep finding ways to pick off your important tech units, never let you get to that critical mass of medevacs, liberators, siege tanks, and also find cute opportunities for disgusting little moves like this. Where in the midst of the chaos, Patience has always got all of these different kind of dirty little maneuvers in the back of his head, which he's just waiting ready to use to get back into that game. And uh, we see it here where he just comes on in there. Unfortunately for him, he doesn't manage to actually kill that much of the army of TY. He keeps the medevacs and tanks alive, but he kills off all the workers again. And he's just going to continue the same pattern of squeezing in bits of economy, committing hard to those counterattacks. A little bit of economy, committing to those counterattacks. And this is the point, I guess it was right here at 10 minutes 30, where he does start focusing on those probes a little bit more. But 90% focus on his micro. 90% focus on just not losing these units because he knows the moment they go down everything falls apart for him if he loses these units ty just pushes across the map and it's not just about can you defend this area from marines and marauders stemming up your ramp obviously with overcharge you can always defend one angle but let's imagine ty's army drops two medevacs back there two medevacs up here how the hell does patience little piece of shit army defend that it simply doesn't but right now, every second that goes by, he is producing a lot more units because he did commit to that economy. And it's not like it was a massive commitment. You guys saw it, it was pretty intermittent probe production. But just those couple of probes squeezed in here or there while killing so many SCVs, he's now up at 35 probes versus 21 SCVs. His income is way higher right now. He's forcing these, unit, these uh, workers even off the gold minerals, which is massive. So if he can just keep buying time, then that's gonna be amazing. And we saw here that TY kept kind of just moving across the map, moving home. This observer was seeing everything that was going on, and TY here was just 
struggling to have any sort of information on his position in the game. And this is also another great thing that happens where the, the longer you harass and the more damage you do and the more you throw off your opponent, the worse their game sense gets. TY here doesn't really know what's going on inside this base. Yes, he's scouted that there was a natural building earlier. He has no idea about the third. He has no idea how much army is waiting for him. He doesn't know if Patience is just waiting with another big Blink Stalker Sentry Immortal army that's about to just crash into the front since that's all TY's been facing this whole game. So Patience just kind of forces TY out of the information game, forces him back, pushes his economy down, and starts to tear everything apart. That was such a sick game. I love this one. Um, but that's about it, guys. Um, really nice way of cleaning that game up there towards the end, of course, where he just kept on rotating with that army, kept refusing to fight on the front. I do think if there's that one mistake we talked about, the biggest one was these two medevacs, which TY sent all the way around the edge of the map, unloaded in this position and was like oh there's no base there and then just picked up and went home and it's like i get you don't have a lot of units at home but you've still got some bio there you've still got some siege tanks and widow mines here i really think he needed to dive on this economy because patience has pulled his whole army over there he has a sentry and a mothership core covering his bases so patience here is gambling He's gambling, saying, I've done so much aggression. I've pinned you back so much. I've got an observer kind of seeing where your army is. I think I can send my whole army to attack you. Meanwhile, TY is trying to play the safe game. He's trying to cover multiple bases. He's thinking about dropping, and then he says, oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be going into a bunch of stalkers or not. Just run away. Just go home. So Patience is allowed to take more liberties because he's a little bit YOLO. He's a little bit more carefree, whereas TY is the guy who's a little bit more of a safe player. He's trying to, trying to make those kind of solid decisions. And as a result, he's like, yeah, I think now's a good time to frontal push. I think that's a kind of bizarre decision. But he does he does make that decision. And Patience is just like, yeah, YOLO! Grabs a tank, does take a lot of damage, but buys himself time. Adepts in the main base, hitting a depot. And uh, from there, it kind of... The, the window just, just disappears steadily. Uh, keep in mind, at this point, 82 supply to 68. Stim, Liberators, Tank Evax, Widow Mines. All the tools he needs to win. Uh, both sides with no upgrades, I believe. Yeah, plus one weapons is, is on the way for TY. But Patience just buys enough time for this big 42 probe, third base economy to kick in. Makes way more units. And over this, like, 10 minutes to 14 minutes is where Patience really builds that economy lead and uses it. GG. Well, well played to Patience. Um, congrats to him on his, his home story win. Of course, he played the finals against Zest. Came back from down 0-2 to win 4-3 in the end, which is pretty damn incredible, actually. Those games are amazing. Even if you're not a fan of PvP, you should go and watch them, and, uh, and that's pretty cool. So thank you so much for hanging out, guys. I uh, do appreciate the support. We'll be back tomorrow with another daily. Probably go over another BlizzCon game. By the way, before I do go, I see far. Send me your replays, guys. The new patch is out. There's chaotic new strategies. There's hydralisks. There's mech in all matchups. There's Tempests that can stun units now, um, Mountain King Tempests or some shit like that. Just hop in games, show me some cool strategies, uh, show me your Protoss plays shutting down the new Zerg strategies, the new Terran strategies, show me your disgusting Cyclone rushes, and uh, yeah, send them to me, I'll cast them next week for Icy Far. Of course, the information is down in the YouTube video below, as well as in Twitch chat right now. Thank you very much for hanging out, guys. Don't forget to hug a watermelon, kick a warus, and of course, punch a watermelon to the moon. I'll catch you guys next time. Goodbye and good night.